The 2017 Las Vegas Supercross was not a night that everyone will remember fondly. The contents of its narrative will likely be debated for several years to come, maybe several generations. But this particular night in Las Vegas gave us one of the most memorable nights of motorcycle racing in history. This isn't just another race you look back at. This isn't even a night where the people walking away with the trophies had sheer elation to focus on. By the time the dust settled, protests were made, rivalries were strengthened, and careers were changed forever. Entering Las Vegas, the 250SX West Region Championship had already been clinched two weeks prior by Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki's Justin Hill. Las Vegas had been the destination where the West and East 250 class riders would meet up for a showdown for years, but the entire dynamic of the race changed with a shift in the rules entering the 2016 season. Instead of having individual main events for each coast that allotted points, the showdown would be the final round for both classes with points being doled out based on finishing position regardless of if an opposite coast rider finished in front of you. The 2016 finale had a lot of crazy moments and resulted in a narrow championship win for Cooper Webb in the 250 West series. It was a sign of things to come in what was now the most meaningful 250 race every single season. The man that won the 2016 showdown and nearly spoiled the party for Webb has a lot to do with this race right here. Joey Savacci began his pro career in 2013 for the JDR J-Star KTM team, where he almost immediately impressed. With several top 10 finishes and a ninth overall in his first full go at Supercross, Savacci was building an instant mold for success. Then the team he was riding for folded and he was left to jump to the KTM amateur support team for help finishing off the 2013 season. After a forgettable 2014 season which he spent at Rockstar Energy KTM recovering from an off-season injury, Savachi was signed to the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team in the 2014 offseason. He immediately became a force to be reckoned with, finishing top 5 in both motocross and supercross while claiming his first overall win at Unadilla. After narrowly missing the supercross title in 2016 and having a monstrous first half of motocross before tailing off to third in the championship, Savachi was largely considered the favorite for the East Region Championship in 2017. And one round into the championship, he made it look like that praise lauded his way was right with a win in Minneapolis. The second man we need to talk about finished second that night. Jordan Smith's pro debut was pushed back to 2015 Supercross when an ankle injury had hampered his plans for much of 2014. The highly touted Geico Honda rider had a lot of pressure on his shoulders and after just two seasons with the team resulting in just one podium, they mutually parted ways. Smith jumped to the Troy Lee Design's Red Bull KTM team and immediately seemed to find the turnaround he needed in his career. Trying to build off his momentous second career podium, Smith faltered at round two and three, which were instead won by a man whose presence in the class is almost as unlikely as the bike he's riding being there. In 2006, KTM was desperately trying to win in America again and hinged a lot of their bets on amateur phenom Zach Osborne. Osborne had been part of the KTM program since 2003 and was widely discussed as a future champion when he made his pro debut at Daytona in 2006, seven years before anyone else he's battling for in this 2017 championship would start their careers. After a disappointing sophomore season in 2007, Osborne was out at KTM and went to the Yamaha of Troy team in 2008. In mid-2008, poof, Osborne was gone. Highly regarded amateur riders not working out in the pro ranks is nothing new and you'd be fine to assume that this is the end of the road for Osborne. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, and that's, hold on. At 18 years old, Zach Osborne packed up and moved to Europe to reinvent his career. In just his third ever GP, Osborne won the first moto of the Irish Grand Prix, beating world champion Tyler Rattray to the punch. A career that looks so far down in the trenches, was being pulled back to life in one of the most unlikely ways possible. Osborne spent the next five years chasing a world title, eventually winning the 2009 Turkish Grand Prix and finishing fourth in the championship in 2010 along the way. By this point, 
He appeared to have a GP career in the making that was worth holding on to, but his mind was still on America, and in 2012, his team manager Steve Dixon gave him one month in America to have another crack at it. Osborne knocked it out of the park. His first career Supercross podium at round three in LA followed with another podium the next week in Oakland. As his month in America ended and he flew back to Europe, the phone was ringing off the hook and just four months later, news broke that Osborne was headed back to the USA full time. Osborne spent two years with Geico Honda, but could not crack the code for success similar to Smith. Then for 2015, Osborne signed with the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna squad, which was switching to the white machines for Husqvarna's triumphant return to racing. The only reason Husqvarna is here in the first place is thanks to the brand that Osborne started his career on nearly a decade ago. In two seasons with Husqvarna leading into 2017, Osborne would finally claim his first win in America at Butts Creek in 2016, 3,816 days after his pro debut. His win at round two in 2017 was the first Supercross win in the 250SX class for Husqvarna since March 24, 2001. After back-to-back -back wins for Osborne, establishing himself a small lead in the championship, it now becomes time to talk about the fourth rider involved in this story. Michael Adam Ciancerulo was born in Port Orange, Florida on October 20th, 1996. At a young age, Ciancerulo saw Jeremy McGrath on the TV, ran and told his parents who knew nothing about the sport that he wanted a dirt bike, and set in motion one of the most dominant amateur careers in the history of the sport. Ciancerulo won 11 Loretta Lynn's Amateur National Championships and signed with Kawasaki before Zach Osborne even made his pro debut. There was so much hype around Ciancerulo that he was drawing comparisons to some of the greatest riders ever seen before he even stepped foot on a pro gate. Though his official rookie campaign in the 2013 Nationals was derailed by an illness leading into the season, Ciancerulo proved the massive praise was worth every syllable by winning his first ever Supercross race at Arlington in 2014. He had won three of the first five Supercross races of his career and had a commanding lead in the championship when he dislocated his shoulder at Toronto, wrecking his shoulder in the process. He then wrecked his shoulder again at the Geneva Supercross later that year, prompting another full Supercross season on the sidelines. When he finally returned to racing and motocross, it was clear the injuries had taken his progress way back. And then, another blow before the 2016 season ever got started. When Ciancerlo finished fifth at Minneapolis in 2017, it was the first time he was back on the gate in a Supercross main event since his shoulder dislocation at Toronto in 2014. Three weeks later, the comeback was complete. The top four in the championship were now making things interesting when Osborne won again the following week in Indianapolis. But the turning point of the season came at the sixth round in Detroit. Osborne had an abysmal night while Jordan Smith claimed his first career Supercross win in emphatic fashion. Savace and Steven Cirillo swept the podium behind him putting Osborne down to third in the championship. Savace had now jumped into the lead with consistent finishes and kept it going with another second place finish behind Smith in back-to-back -back weeks. The penultimate round of the championship changed everything. Osborne put on a maniacal charge to take the lead away from Savace at the halfway point of the East Rutherford Supercross. No big deal to Savace, who was just looking for another safe ride to keep his points lead in check. Whoops, never mind. Savace fell while running second and crucially got up in the next lane and continued on. Kawasaki argued that it was unsafe to rejoin where he went off, but the AMA didn't care and slapped Savace with a 5 place penalty, pushing him back to 8th. An Osborne win coupled with a Smith third put the TLD man in the lead of the championship by one point over Osborne and Savace, with only Vegas left to run. Ciancerillo with a fourth kept himself just enough alive in the title to at least talk about him. So here we are, one point separates three men, essentially guaranteeing whoever beats who wins the championship. In a race where the other half of the field is already lost and only has personal glory to fight for, speculation runs rampant on how things will shake down. And when the gate finally drops in Las Vegas, it appeared we were already down one man. Looks like oh, Osborne is caught up in the midst of it. His bike is trapped underneath. That's, yeah, that's Alex's Alex. machine, the 70. Fork and was down. Osborne is stuck and sees the championship leaving him behind. Osborne remounts nearly 30 seconds behind the leaders, which, by the way, consist of the other three men in the championship fight. At this stage, it fully appears it will be Smith and Savace trying to settle the championship amongst each other. 
And Savachi, who won here last year, may even have the upper hand in this situation. Whoops, never mind. We are barely one lap in and this thing is unraveling quickly. Now Jordan Smith is sitting in a really good spot with not a lot of heavy hitters right behind him and no need to go for the lead. This man, who was 21 points down just 4 rounds ago, might very well have the biggest month of his career culminate into a walk home championship. Whoops, never mind. Oh, are you kidding me? The oh, pressure man. is on. It's eating these guys up alive. Something is happening. I checked. It is not a full moon. I could find no reports of a black cat walking in front of the gate. The stars and the planets are not aligned. But the roulette ball is rolling in Vegas, and nobody knows where it will land just yet. Smith recovers, still ahead of Savachi. And with two minutes down, we can just barely see Zach Osborne streak across the bottom of the screen. Four sections behind Smith and Savachi. As Jordan Smith crosses the line on a lap three, he just needs to regroup, and everything will be fine. And another bite down. Is that Smith That's again? Smith. It is. Smith is down again. It just didn't work out. Smith has helped gingerly off the track after one of the most violent high-speed crashes of 2017. His championship is done, and he's also sustained a back injury that will keep him sidelined for the entirety of the 2017 motocross season. The Supercross gods take no mercy on minor mistakes, and one of the most unlikely championship runs in the first season with his team comes to a bitter end on lap three. Savachi flies by the powerless KTM, knowing he is now in a prime position to make this championship his. For the next three laps, Savachi will sit a comfortable fourth, which will easily seal the title for him before it all starts falling apart. On lap six, Savachi gives up three spots to Mitchell Oldenburg, Dylan Ferrandis, and Aaron Plessinger, dropping him to seventh. He's still fine though, as Osborne has about 15 seconds to make up with half the race left. On lap 10, Savachi is passed by Jimmy Dakotis, dropping him to eighth. Even so, it still looks unlikely Osborne will catch Savachi. Hang on, who's leading the race again? Cian Cerullo is walking away with his second win on the season and has no idea the chaos unfolding behind him. He needs 13 more points than Savachi to win this title, which means he needs Savachi to finish ninth or worse. And with five to go, Savachi is being caught by Cameron McAdoo. If Adam Cian Cerullo can win this championship, it would not only be one of the biggest points deficits overcome at the final round in Supercross history, it would be the first time anyone has won a championship in which they enter the final round in fourth in the standings. Savachi fans breathe a sigh of relief momentarily when he begins to drop McAdoo and catch Hayden Melross with a couple laps remaining. But everyone in the stadium and on TV is watching the seconds being slashed away as Zach Osborne has pulled this gap down to under five seconds with two laps to go. As the white flag waves, Osborne can see Savachi just up the road, but believes it's still too far of a journey. Savachi runs his best first sector of the entire race, passing Melross in the process. As they enter the stadium with six turns of the championship left, Melross is the only thing left between Savachi and Osborne. The live standings on the screen show us a crucial scene, as Cian Cerullo sits just two points down, tied with Osborne for second as he takes the checkered flag out front. If Savachi and Osborne were to somehow both fall, Adam Cian Cerullo is the champion. Osborne makes the move on Melross with five turns to go, but loses time in the process. He clicks up a gear and hits the first set of whoops as hard as he can. And then, with just two turns left in this championship, the Supercross record books change forever. Osborne's here! The battle is on to the checkers in the title! Osborne to the inside! Takes him out! Oh, Savachi's in the dirt! Osborne, final corner, and the title! Eleven years, multiple trips around the world, a failure and rebirth of a career in America, Zach Osborne is finally a champion. Tears pour down his face as he realizes his long journey to the top is over. Just like his career in 2008, he has pulled a nearly non-existent chance back to life through sheer will and determination. A dejected Savachi comes home 14th, giving Cian Cerullo second in the championship. Kawasaki protests Osborne for the move, but knows it's likely a futile attempt. The AMA hands Osborne a $7,500 fine, which he surely doesn't care about in the slightest. As of April 2020, Osborne is still the only man of these four to have won a Supercross title, 
after Savachi and C and Cirillo failed to convert their remaining attempts before moving to the 450SX class full time. Smith is still in the class trying, now riding for the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. The 250SX main event in Las Vegas had some of the most memorable swings and momentum ever. But behind the podium celebrations, the 450 class is lining up on the gate for their main event. And something even crazier is about to happen. <laughs> 